this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And this is a small haul to show you some items that I hauled that are art, craft, a hobby related, and also the reading books that I got in the month of December. So let's just start right away, shall we? First of all, I got a felt jigsaw roll. Uh, I had one that was plastic that I really hated, and um, this came up at uh, book, book Outlet, so I grabbed it right away. It's a really nice one. It's a escape puzzle here, Raven, Ravensburger. My um, son gave me this. He does puzzles for um, stress relief. He has a very stress-filled job. And uh, so he asked me, he showed me a few puzzles that he had, and I picked this one. And now he tells me that there's a, a mystery to solve and that your puzzle doesn't quite look like this picture. It's a little bit different. So that's going to be a lot of fun to do. Paint by Number Kit. This is Times Square at Midnight, and it is on stretched art canvas stretched over high-quality wooden frame for easy display. So it's right on the frame and stretched and everything. So that is really, really cool. So it comes with everything that you need, uh, three paint brushes, and a wall hanging kit as well. So also got this from Book Outlet. I'm going to have to have a look at the other ones that they have because this is really cool. The last item before we get to the books is I got one of these uh, sticker mosaic books. This is Art Masterpieces, and you get, all your, you get all your sticker pieces at the back for each individual puzzle, and these are, these are art pictures. So I thought this would be fun to try because there's lots of books out there for this, and just might be something a little different to... Uh, keep me occupied. <laughs> so um, we'll start with the books now. So I'll show you what I got from my abominable book club. Got this nice big vinyl sticker and then I got this was the was this the I think this was the main item it's called Bitter Chills Holiday Edition, and it is a anthology by J. Alexander. So, I don't really know if there's anything to read. It just says... Experience the horror again this Christmas with an expanded illustrated edition of the first anthology from Blood Rites Horror, featuring all 11 stories from the first edition of Bitter Chills, as well as new poetry stories and sequels from the authors, authors' notes and profiles, and an all-new afterward from Christopher Badcock, plus 11 full-page illustrations from the editor. This book is a perfectly terrifying gift for Cramp not. So, let's see if we can find some illustrations. So this looks really quite interesting. It looks like there's an author's note after each story. No, nope, maybe not. Just after some of them. So it looks really good. Anyways, I'm excited about that. And it came with its own bookmark. Then the second book was the Cottingly Cuckoo, a sharp mix of mystery, fantasy, and psychological horror, says Paul Tremblay. A challenging baby, a threat unseen, and no one to trust. And the book is by A.J. Elwood. I'll read you the back. If fairy tales never go out of fashion, it is because of books like this. Francisco Dimitri. 
Captivated by books and stories, Rose dreams of a life away from the confines of the Sunnyside care home she works in, until elderly resident Charlotte Favell offers an unexpected glimpse of enchantment. She keeps an aged stack of letters about the Cottingley fairies, the photographs made famous by Arthur Conan Doyle, but later dismissed as a hoax. The letters insist there is proof that the fairies existed. Rose is eager to learn more, but Charlotte allows her to read only a piece at a time, drawing Rose, Rose into her web. As the letter's content grows more menacing, Rose discovers she is unexpectedly pregnant and feels another door to the future has slammed. Her obsession with what really happened in Cottingley all those years ago spirals as inexplicable events occur inside her home. She begins to entertain dark thoughts about her baby and its origins. That sounds really good. I, uh, I read the book about the Cottingley fairies and it was really good. It's hard to imagine that someone like Arthur Conan, Conan Doyle could have been fooled by paper fairies. So then we get a gently used secondhand book and so far I have loved every one I got. This time I haven't heard of the art author, Marcus Sedgwick, and the book is called A Love Like Blood. So it's a nice looking book. If life has taught me one thing, it is this that the worst monsters are entirely human. It began in a hole in the ground in Paris in the days after the liberation. What I saw there, I saw only for the time it takes a match to burn down, and yet it decided the rest of my life. I tried to forget it at first, to ignore it, but I could not. It came back to me. He came back to me. He hurt people I loved. And so I took the first step on a journey from which there would be no return, a path that led me to fear, to hatred, and to revenge, but above all else, to blood. Now I believe this is a vampire story. So that's what I got from the club, and I'm totally thrilled. Ito came out with a new book this month, Deserter. A story collection. A vengeful family hides an army deserter for eight years after the end of World War II, cocooning him in a false reality where the war never ended. A pair of girls look alike, but they're not twins and a boy's nightmare threatens to spill out into the real world. This hauntingly strange story collection showcases a dozen of Junji Ito's earliest works from when he burst onto the horror scene, sowing fresh seeds of terror. Love it. I love my Ito books. A Valancourt book. I believe this is a Valancourt International. And it is Thanatrauma by Steve Rasnick Tim. This is a collection of stories. Thanatrauma, definition. The dread of it erodes you, the shadows waiting at the end, the impending conclusion, the troubling dream from which you will not wake. These 21 stories, four published here for the first time, explore some of our fundamental fears, death, loss, grief, and aging. In Reflections in Black, a man takes a phantasmagoric Halloween journey in search of a former love. In The Parts Man, a man enters a desperate contract with a sinister en entity in a long vintage automobile. The darkly beautiful The Dead Outside My Door is a haunting post-apocalyptic tale unlike any you, you've ever read. Other offerings include Whatever You Want, in which a Christmas wish has terrible consequences, Torn, a bizarre version of a highly personalized hell, and The Way Station, a tribute to the legendary Stefan Grabinski. Also included is August Freeze from the lost, undistributed winner 
winter 1985 issue of Weird Tales. In this new collection, which is by turns chilling and thought-provoking, Tim is at his very best. So I'm really, really into the Valancourt books, and um, I'm, I'm collecting them to a degree now, so this one sounds really good. Also picked up a book that uh, I've been wanting to read for a long time is Bird Box by Josh Mallerman and I have not seen the film. And in case you haven't, this is what the book says it's about. Something terrifying, oh, something is out there, something terrifying that must not be seen. One glimpse and a person is driven to deadly violence. No one knows what it is or where it came from. Five years after it began, a handful of scattered survivors remain, including Mallory and her two young children. Living in an abandoned house near the river, Mallory has long dreamed of fleeing to a place where her family might be safe. But the journey ahead will be terrifying. Twenty miles downriver in a rowboat, boat, blindfolded. One wrong choice and they will die. And something is following them. But is it man, animal, or monster? Engulfed in darkness, surrounded by sounds both familiar and frightening, Mallory embarks on a harrowing odyssey, a trip that takes her into an unseen world and back into the past, to the companions who once saved her. Interweaving past and present, Josh Mallerman's breathtaking debut is a horrific and gripping snapshot of a world unraveled that will have you racing to the final page. Mmm, sounds really good. Oh, and it's gonna be a real easy read too. Look at the look at the spaces between the sentences on there. There's also a sequel to this too. And I got Mrs. March by Virginia Fito. Uh, this was a Christmas present from my one of my sons. An explosive debut novel that flips the New York literary scene on its pretentious head. George March's latest novel is a smash. No one could be prouder than his dutiful wife, Mrs. March. A careful creature of routine and decorum, she lives a precariously controlled existence on the Upper East Side. One morning, the shopkeeper of her favorite patisserie suggests that her husband's latest protagonist, a detestable character named Joanna, is based on Mrs. March herself. Clutching her ostrich leather pocket book and mint-colored gloves, she flees the shop. What could have merited this humiliation? Just a minute, I'm going to take a sip of my drink. That one casual remark robs Mrs. March of the belief that she knew everything about her husband and herself. Suddenly, she is hurled on a harrowing journey that begins within the pages of a book. While snooping in George's office, Mrs. March finds a newspaper clipping about a missing woman. Did George have anything to do with her disappearance? He's been going on a lot of hunting truck trips up north with his editor lately, leaving Mrs. March alone at night with her tormented thoughts and the cockroaches that have started to appear and strange breathing noises. As she begins to decode her husband's secrets, her deafening anxiety and fierce determination threaten everyone in her wake, including her stoic housekeeper, Martha, and her unobtrusive son, Jonathan, whom she loves so profoundly when she remembers to love him at all. Combining a Hitchcockian sensibility with wickedly dark humor, Virginia Fito, a brilliantly talented and mischievous newcomer, offers a razor-sharp exploration of the fragility of identity, a mesmerizing novel of psychological suspense and casebook insecurity turned full-blown neuroses. Woohoo! This sounds really good. And one more thing. It's a book, but it's not a book to read. It is a reading journal. A clockwork reader. It's time for me to take this off. So this is by the YouTuber 
uh, she's at the back of the book here. A Clockwork Reader is the name of her of her channel, Hannah Azarang. And this is a really nice reading journal. I've uh, started using one in twenty in twenty twenty one, and I've really enjoyed using it. So this has got all sorts of fan, uh, fun stuff at the beginning. It's got um, it's got reading goals, reading stats, a to read list, what to read next, and then I think I missed a few things. But then here's what your review page is like, and it's quite different. I think it'll be fun to do. Um, so you've got your title, author, narrator, if there is one. I think I can also put illustrator there, if there is one. And then the format, which is a new thing. I don't have that in my current one. Your stars, date started and finished, the genre, the number of pages, and who the book was recommended by. And then it asks you some questions. What is your favorite quote? Where were you when you read this book? Most memorable, memorable scene? Would you recommend this book and why? And what did you learn from this book? And then this part right here that's empty, I'm going to use that to put a synopsis of the book because I have a really hard time remembering what my books are about after I've read them. And so it does that for 100 books. And do 100 reviews. And then at the back of the book, there's some more fun stuff. Let's see. Favorite authors. And there's lots of room for this stuff, too. Favorite quotes. I don't know if I'll fill all of these in, but at least they're there. Most anticipated book releases. Books to reread. Favorite childhood books. Book to screen. Favorite movies. Favorite TV shows. Um, reading playlist. So you can write your music that you like to read to. I can't read when music or the TV is playing. And where I get my books for if you go to bookstores and such. And your favorite YouTube cre creators. So a really, a really interesting and nice book. I have to say it's expensive though for a reading journal. Um, I used to read three to four hundred books a year when I was a book blogger myself and uh, buying three to four of these books at 30 bucks each would be quite an expensive uh, it would be quite expensive but um, I'm gonna try it out and see what I think of it. It's made by DK Publishing, too. So you know it's going to be a nice book. It's got these um, flexi, it's flexi bound. And, uh, yeah, it's got your, got your elastic. I love books with an elastic. And that's it. That's everything that I got in this uh, mini haul. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. And thank you for watching. Until next time, bye!